We all know Shrek 2 is the best, but Alex Turner would have been about 17 when that came out. So he's probably a little bit too old for it. It's raw. Where's the lamb sauce? Brick by brick. See ladies, one minute is a long time. Every single Arctic Monkeys song ranked worst to best. And first things first, it's not actually every single Arctic Monkeys song. It's just everything that's on Spotify. If you're from the UK, it's pretty much the law that you have to be an Arctic Monkeys fan. I'm a law abiding citizen. And they do have some bad songs, not that many. And most of them, they have the self-awareness to not put them on an album. I'd say about, about 80% of their bad songs are, are B-sides. So I can't be too mad at them. So I'm just going to go straight into it. I probably have my hottest take at the very bottom of this list. Let's just get it out of the way now. The worst Arctic Monkey song in 118th place is Don't Sit Down Because I've Moved Your Chair. I really do not like this one. I hate to say it, but it reminds me of Muse. Because the instrumental is not too bad, but the lyrics are just awful. Like, come on. That's something I never thought I'd say about an Alex Turner song. It is like he just picked random words out of a bowl, or whatever the 2011 version of ChatGPT was. Picked a chat on his DS. And to make it worse, it's a staple of their live sets. When I saw them live this summer, it was the last show before he got laryngitis. So his voice was already going a bit. And they played this, and then they played Snap Out of it and it was raining and there were a load of coked up geezers in their Stone Island gear around me. I just thought this is 90 quid, I'm not getting back. But then the next song was Cry Lightning, then into Teddy Picker. I was like, okay, nice. Still a good show, but the worst of the three times that I've seen them. Probably not worth 90 quid, maybe like 70, 70 quid plus booking fee. Next in 117th place, I want it all. At the end of the day, I am a wannabe hipster and if I could grow a proper beard and have a top knot, I definitely would. So every fibre of my being wants to hate the album AM just because it's so popular. But sadly for my hipster cred, it actually has quite a lot of bangers. But fortunately for my hipster cred, I can hate on this song because I think it is a genuinely bad song. The riff, it sounds a bit like a 4x4 car advert. Not classy 4x4, like a Lexus or something. It's like a real dirty 4x4 for real dirty geezers. I don't know enough car companies to know what the opposite of Lexus is. And it just sounds bad as well. Even the shoe op shoe ops. Especially the shoe op shoe ops. 116, 2013. I think this one is called 2013 because that's how many seconds it took them to write it. Unless that's a long time. I don't know how, many, how long that actually is. I've just checked, I just had a quick maths break and it's 2013 seconds is 33 minutes. So probably about 29 minutes longer than it took them to write this. I care for this song about as much as they do, which is clearly not a lot, but at least they kept it off the album. So fair play. It's like Alex's ugliest child, but anytime he takes it out in public, he makes him wear, wear a paper bag on his head. So it's like, can you be too mad at that? 115, Sketchhead. Sketchhead, get it? Like he says in the song about 50 times, my Sketchhead heads will get that. It sounds like a demo, a demo that should have remained buried somewhere deep in Alex Turner's hard drive. Although it does strike me as the type of guy to not own a computer. It does pick up a little bit at the end when he stops shouting Sketchhead, but that's not enough to save this song from sounding like something from an alternate universe where Arctic Monkeys are a dodgy pub band. 114, Stop the World, I Wanna Get Off With You. Great song title, but sadly that's the highlight. It's another one, a bit like 2013, where it does feel a little bit like someone held a gun to Alex Turner's head and gave him five minutes to write a song that sounded a bit like AM. And maybe that is what happened. I imagine a guy like Nick O'Malley gets quite grumpy in the mornings. It is them phoning it in a bit, but I think they've earned a few lazy songs. 113. Chun Li, Flying Bird Kick. The delivery of Show Us Your Special Move at the start is amazing. I don't know who says that, but they sound like a Yorkshire sea captain from the 1700s or something. Sadly, the song continues after that line for nearly five minutes. Five minutes. And it's literally the same two bars over and over again. Hey, just like a British high street, am I right? Cheers. Okay, next, I have a bit of a, a grouping. I kind of realised I'd said pretty much exactly the same thing for all of these songs, which is they're all B-sides and they all sound like the album that they're on, 
but worse than the songs that are on there. So this is like collectively B-sides I, I wouldn't bother with if you haven't if you haven't listened to them before. So at joint 99th, I think I think that's right. I don't know if that's right. That might be wrong. IDST, Matador, Electricity, I Haven't Got My Strange, Evil Twin, Red Right Hand, Nettles, The Death Ramps, Plastic Tramp, Put Your Dukes Up John, Cigarette Smoker Fiona, Daphrame 2R, <laughs> Bad Woman, and Seven. 98, if you found this, it's probably too late. The strings at the start sound bloody great, like a theme song from some TV show set in the 1800s, which just about saves it from going in the, the B-side iceberg below. And then the actual song gets going, and it's another one that just sounds a lot like their early stuff, but it's got nothing on their early stuff. And if you're a big I, Y, F, T, I, P, T, L, is that right? Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of that, you'll understand that reference. 97, Batphone. This song is what people who hate Tranquility Bass Hotel and Casino think all songs from Tranquility Base, Hotel and Casino sound like. Boring, nonsensical lyrics. It's just a waste of three minutes of your precious, precious life. And I agree that this song is all of those things, but it's the only one off that album that doesn't land for me. Land on my lunar surface. And it can be pretty cold out in space, so make sure you wear some socks. Knee socks. It's just quite bland, really, this song. It's... In a similar vein to Batphone, this is what people who don't like AM think all of AM sounds like. Now if this was a Nando's order, this is barely Lemon and Herb, and you at least want medium. If you have any self-respect, you'll get a medium. Even I get medium, and I can't handle medium, but I still get it anyway. I'm always very ill after, but, but people respect me. 95, Library Pictures. I don't know why, but I don't really vibe with any of the heavier songs off Suck It and See. I get the impression they, they wanted to go full soft rock, but felt like, like maybe they'd get a bit of a backlash from their fans. The heavier ones on this album feel like a bit of an afterthought. Maybe they should have just split the album into two, the, the Suck EP and the It and See EP. 94, Brick by Brick, another heavy one from Suck It and See, another one that just feels a bit undercooked, or in the words of Gordon, It's raw! Where's the lamb sauce? Brick by brick! Moving on. 93, Black Treacle. It's like a demo of Suck It and See, the song. And it's pretty much everything that Suck It and See is, but a bit worse. And if I ever wanted to listen to Black Treacle, I'd just listen to Suck It and See, and then I wouldn't want to listen to Black Treacle anymore. 92, Snap Out of It. Yep, Snap Out of It. It's another set list staple. It's not terrible, but for me, it just doesn't doesn't sound like Arctic Monkeys. I find it so generic. It could literally be any band's song. Like, think of a band, like any band. Could they have made a song like this? Yep, they could have. Yeah, even them. You know I'm right on this. 91, Fireside. Hey, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know I said I'm not an AM hater, but I'm not. I actually am not. But same as Snap Out of It, this one just doesn't really land for me. 90, Reckless Serenade. Again, this could be any band song. It's just a very vanilla pop song. Give me some chocolate, Alex. Cover me in chocolate and lick it off. 89, Fire in the Thud. Another fire related song. And I think this one takes the prize as what all humbug songs sound like to people who don't like humbug. Slow and boring. 88, Stick into the Floor. Barely one minute long. I'm always a fan of a short song. And it does feel a lot longer than that, in a good way. There's a, quite a lot that's happening here. See ladies, one minute is a long time. I've got another mini iceberg here, more like an ice cube in comparison. There's only two songs. So in joint 86, This House is a Circus and If You Were There, Beware. They kind of produce the same feelings in me as each other and they're on the same album. Musically, they're both good. Lyrically, kind of, eh. Lyrics are still decent though. Similar to uh, Black Treacle. These are the, the Black Treacles of Favourite Worst Nightmare. Teddy Picker is the Suck It and See. So if I wanted to listen to these, I'd just listen to Teddy Picker. And even if I didn't want to listen to these, I'd listen to Teddy Picker. Whatever I'm doing in life, I listen to, te to Teddy Picker. It's a great bloody song. 85, perhaps Vampires is a bit strong, but I know it's heresy to have a song from the first album this low on the list, the precious first album. But 
C A like the song title, but dot dot dot. Yeah, it's the worst song on the first album. 84, Red Light Indicates Doors Are Secured. Another debut album song, Sue Me, sorry. The first album's songs are mostly about standard everyday life stuff, or every night life stuff, I guess. But across all of them, the energy is really high. It's all really aggressive. It's like going to the shops on LSD. This song just lacks that energy for me. Even Riot Van has more energy than this one. 83, The Blonde O-Sonic Shimmer Trap. That's hard to say. It's surprising that this is a Suck It and See era song because it sounds exactly like Humbug. Not bad, not crazy good, but you know, worth a listen if you haven't heard it before. Gets a, a thumbs up from me, not two, not two thumbs and kind of not a full one, like a... But why is my thumb so wonky? That's not normal, is it? 82, Who the Fuck Are Arctic Monkeys? Song's fine but it overstays its welcome by about three minutes. And when it comes to song length, I have a very sensitive gag reflex, but only when it comes to song length, if you know what I mean. Uh, the majority of Arctic Monkeys songs are in like the three to four minute range, which is perfect. This one is nearly six minutes long. Six minutes long. If they played this song live now, with their new slower tempos, it would take about 16 days for them to finish it. 81. Only ones who know. Decent song. Some good lines in there. But there are 80 other Arctic Monkey songs that I'd rather listen to. Including 80. Temptation greets you like your naughty friend. Just a cool vibe. Simple riff. Decent lyrics. Dizzy Rascal. Before he was a wrong'un. Another one to check out if you haven't heard it before. I don't know how, what, what angle I went for at the last one. This is like two degrees more upright. 79. Probably couldn't see me for the lights, but you were staring straight at me. Who the hell is Frank Spencer? I've never been clear on that. I thought it was that comedian who's from like Birmingham, but I don't think that's him. I don't know why he'd be name dropped in Night of Monkey Song either. Who was that guy I'm thinking of? It's that guy who's always on like Mock the Week. And he's like got a really annoying Brummy accent. Anyway, when you see Alex Turner now, it's hard to imagine that he ever had any kind of any kind of struggles with the ladies, like at all. It's just classic lyrics, really. This is like the the Olivia Olivia Rodrigo, the Olivia the Olivia Rodrigo, Olivia Rodrigo, the Olivia Rodrigo. For people in two thousand and six, this song, seventy eight. Anyways, nice little tune, some good lines on there. But when are you ever going to be in the mood to listen to this? Well, I'm not going to plan my day based around how, how many times I can listen to it anyways. You know, it's not Teddy Picker. Although, the line about having and eating your cake, followed by Alex Turner going, mmm, is something that I would listen to any time I was eating cake. Mmm, which is not very often, sadly. 77, don't forget whose legs you're on. A bit of a low-key B-side. Sounds a bit like Fire in the Thud, but has a little more going on. Really strange lyrics as well. Definitely on the stonery side of stoner rock 76 joining the dots pretty much copy and paste what i said about the last song and put it here it's pretty much exactly the same but a little bit more exciting it also sounds a lot like a, a demo version of pretty visitors plain looking no, not maybe not plain looking visitors but slightly above average looking visitors 75 catapult three humbug b-sides in a row laziness or just coincidence yeah bit of both really but to be fair, they do all sound pretty similar. If you like songs like Crying Lightning and Pretty Visitors, I'd listen to all three of these B-sides because they sound exactly like those songs. 74, what if you were right the first time? Musically, great. Lyrically, not bad. Vocally, yeah, pretty good. Sounds like a classic Favourite Worst Nightmare era song, really. Very fast and very aggressive. This song's basically Oscar Pistorius bit of a dated reference, but how many murdering runners have there been since him? And I do think this song should have made the album ahead of This House is a Circus and If You Were There Beware. 73, Baby I'm Yours. The cover, sounds good. Has some other geezer singing in the second verse. Next, 72, Mr. Schwartz. Starts off sounding a bit like Sufjan Stevens. Ends up a bit like Father John Misty song. Something off his new album. Like a lot of the car, it's very cinematic. Not just the music, but the lyrics as well. For a lot of the songs on there, if you're in the right mood, 
they will hit you like a freight train. But being in that mood is, is a bit of a rare occurrence sometimes. So most of the time they do hit you like a whatever the opposite of a freight train is. A, a paper boat. Either way, it's a good song. 71, jet skis on the moat. Again, very cinematic. The wah wah guitars sound great. Don't know if that's a technical term. And again, if you're in the right mood, this could be a 10 out of 10. But he's asking for trouble having a line about watching paint dry. Now he knew what the critics were gonna say about this one. 70, mad sounds. It's a nice sounding song. Very pleasant to listen to. It's got some of his least intriguing lyrics, but they kind of fit the music pretty well, so fair play. And then at the end they hit us with the ooh la la's, when you hit me, hit me hard. Wrong band, but you know what I mean. 69, one for the road. I might be crazy, but this song is literally why do you only call me when you're high? Just different lyrics. There must be some video where they, where they play them over the top of each other and there's no difference. Not a classic, but still good. 68, all my own stunts. A heavier one from Suck It and See that I actually like. I think it's because this one does sound quite a lot like Humbug. Especially the bit before the chorus where it goes like Dunna, dunna, dunna. That is classic humbug. 67, the bad thing. The lyrics are a bit on the nose for Alex, but I think it works it. It sounds like a decent favourite worst nightmare song, and that's what it is. Plus, it's barely two minutes long. Plus, it has a key change. Ah, oh, I bloody love a key change. Without the key change, this song probably would be about 100. It'd be below the B-side iceberg. But I'm just a slut for a key change. 66, big ideas. Musically, great. Another one that sounds like a modern Father John Misty song. I do really like the verses, but I find the chorus a little bit bland. 65, potentially a hot take. Do me a favour. I do still like this one. I like when a song starts in one place and ends in another place, but not when it comes to this song. I don't know why. I feel like it loses something once it goes into overdrive. I just prefer the first half. If you're angry, don't get mad. This is just a stupid video talking about Arctic Monkeys. Don't start a riot van. It's a nice, much needed breather in the middle of whatever people say I am. Quite a relatable experience if you've ever been on a night out in the UK. And again, it barely tops two minutes, so I'm all for it. 63, Frightlined Dining Room. I don't think I'd heard this one before I was putting this list together, but wow, fair play. Can't believe this wasn't on Humbug. Pretty weird song, but it sounds great. Distorted bass, always love that. Got plenty of that. It's a bit like a bridge between Favourite Worst Nightmare and Humbug, this one. It's got the power of Favourite Worst Nightmare, but a bit less aggressive. It's like if Teddy Picker was wearing glasses and tucked in his shirt. Does that make sense? I think it makes perfect sense. 62, the car. The phrase I'd use to explain what's going on in most, Arct most modern Arctic Monkey songs would be, no drums, just vibes. And this is a good embodiment of that. They can use that line for the advertising of their next album if they want, for free. No drum, no drums, just vibes. Arctic Monkeys. But some of the songs on there show that you don't need drums, just strings. No drums, just strings. Sorry, Matt. I think Alex should start scoring films, to be honest. Feels like the next step for him to become kind of the next Johnny Greenwood. 61, science fiction. Yeah, look. The two albums that have come up the least so far are probably The Car and Tranquility Base. So you can be hearing the term cinematic quite a lot now. And this song's called Science Fiction, but I get more horror vibes from it. Like a haunted house in a song form. And there's some drums on here. Probably the heaviest drums on Tranquility Bass, which isn't saying it, which isn't saying much. I bet Matt Helders is backed up with drumming energy. He needs to release it somehow. 60, Arabella. There's a formula to my favorite Alex Turner lyrics. And this song kind of made me realise it. So it's, she takes a swig of her Mexican Coke, makes you wish you were the bottle. And there's quite a few like that, that uh, she's X, I wish I was Y, kind of that kind of thing. You know, that's not a skirt, it's a sawn off shotgun, and I hope you've got it aimed at me. That's like a half one. But, so I'm glad that that line's in there. It's a Black Sabbath ripoff really, but it works. 59, Golden Trunks. It's about... Donald Trump wearing some underwear. If that's one of Alex's fantasies, then fair play. I won't judge. Not too much going on in this one, but I really love the melodies. Change the instruments to be a bit more folky and this could be a Fleet Foxes song. Seriously, I'm not crazy. Be like, you know, Donald, you would fall and turn the turn the white snow red as strawberries. In the summertime. Do, 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 do. Another ice cube here. Joint 57th. She's Thunderstorms and the Hellcat Spangled Shalalala sound pretty similar. Individually, I like them both. 
especially lyrically. Great stuff, great stuff, Alex, good job. But on the album, again, they sound exactly like Suck It and See, but a bit worse. Suck it and see, you know, no. Great song, sure you'll be hearing about it later. 56, Potion Approaching. This song's good, solid cut from Humbug, but the thing holding it back from being a, a classic is the last line about, would you like me to build you a go-kart? Like, what the f- but The thing that saves it from being lower down the list is when it goes into half time, because that is like, mmm, that part is godly, seriously. Up there with one of the best one minutes of their career. 55, Dangerous Animals, another decent one off Humbug. And when I'm saying decent, I'm not meaning like, oh yeah, it's fine. It's like eight out of 10. I'm like a big fan of every song from like 80. The riff reminds me a bit of Teddy Picker and I love Teddy Picker, as I've said many times. But I've taken a few blows to the head in my day. So everything sounds like Teddy Picker to me, even like Ultra Cheese sounds like Teddy Picker. I'm a big fan of the, the line. Let's make a mess, lioness. <laughs> Ugh. Might use that somewhere. What I'm gonna use is my wedding vows. Not the song for the first dance though. For my first dance, I want the same song that I want played at my funeral. Closer by Nine Inch Nails. I wanna fuck you like a D-A-N-G-E-R-U-S. 54, my propeller. Another, another decent one off Humbug. Big Queens of the Stone Age vibe on this one. Quite low key at first, but dark and moody. Definitely a grower, as is Alex's penis, I guess, which I assume this song's about. I did Google it and apparently it's about depression, but come on, coax me out my low and have a spin of my propeller. My propeller won't spin and I can't get it started on my own. 53, The Afternoon's Hat. Technically not off Humbug, although it is the B-side to my propeller. So nice to see those two hanging out still. It sounds a lot like my propeller, like a lot, a lot. But I think the chorus on this is just a tiny bit more memorable. I still like my propeller. I still like this one. So, you know, don't mind. 52, despair in the departure lounge. The word despair is a bit underused these days, so I might try and bring it back. And this song does make you feel despair in a good way. It's just Alex and his guitar. So no drums, just vibes. And it's an early one as well. So, you know, they can add that to the poster. No drums, just vibes since 2005, almost rhymes. I would like to say this is like the motion picture soundtrack, but I make enough Radiohead mentions, so I'm going to diverse, diversify a bit, make a Smiths comparison. This is their I Know It's Over. You know, a good song, but I'd never choose to listen to it just because of how depressed it makes me. 51, I ain't quite where I think I am. I really, really, really wish that they'd called this song Wherever I Think I Am, That's Where I'm Not, because that would have been, come on, that's good. That would make that, that would make this top five song just because of that. It's a bit of a funky disco song, so fair play. I didn't think they were capable of that, but you know, Alex contains multitudes. He's not like other songwriters. It's a bit one note, but the harmonies are just... <laughs> 50, the world's first ever monster truck front flip. When I saw the track list for Tranquility Bass for the first time, I thought this song would either be like full on heavy metal or a big piano ballad and it's a piano ballad. Probably would have preferred the metal song, but I still like this one. Similar to Golden Trunks, the melodies in the chorus are what makes this. And I'm serious that Fleet Foxes should do a cover of this. It's it's literally Fleet Foxes. 49, Balaclava. Another great example of why Matt Helders is known as the Agile Beast. Just sounds like all the good favorite worst nightmare songs really. Upbeat, aggressive. I just really love the final verse where it's just the drums and bass. He's like, oh, keep on the balaclava. You know, it just worked. 48, dance little liar. Get on your dancing shoes. Oh, wrong dancing song. They have a lot of songs about dancing actually, but it's another great humbug song. Slow and moody. Basically the opposite of balaclava, but has some of the agile beasts. Best drumming. He's just a great drummer. Like they're all good musicians, but you know, Matthew J. Helders the third is quality. 47, you're so dark. There are three types of people in the world. People who are yet to have an emo phase, people who are in their emo phase, or people who are out of their emo phase. And I think all three types can relate to this song. Like we all love a sexy goth, and this is like the theme song for them. 
plus the Smiths reference about the cemetery gates. Just missing a Radiohead reference for this to be my favourite Arctic Monkeys song. 46, she looks like fun. Key changes. Another key change. And they actually announce it as well. One of the more upbeat songs on Tranquility Base. With what seems like what seems like the mo most nonsensical lyrics at first. But it's actually about scrolling through someone's Instagram. So it makes sense. Great guitar solo. Melodies in the bridge are great. I'm a fake hipster, but I do love Tranquility Base. 45. I want to be yours. I don't have TikTok, so I don't really know how this song's blown up in the way it has. I really hope there's like some viral video of people pretending to be vacuum cleaners, like snorting up lines of dirty carpets. But however it got big, it's a good way to close out the album. It's a bit like a stripped back version of Do I Wanna Know? And it made me Google what a lecky meter is, so it's educational as well. 44, number one party anthem. Like a lot of their good songs, the lyrics just remind you of a certain time, a certain night, takes you right back there to where you met a certified mind blower or something. I wonder what the mind blower certification process is actually. I bet there is a fee involved. I don't know if there's a board, or you get a guy to come out, you have to pay a fee. I haven't had my mind blown recently to be honest. You know what other part of me isn't getting blown? My P43, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. First of all, great use of the word side boob. I was despairing for that term's usage before this song came out. So good to have that back. Second of all, I really like the bass line, really tickles my pickle. And it sounds exactly like the soundtrack of a 70s sci-fi film or something, which is what they're going for, I imagine. My only complaint is it's set in the future and there's a guy still called Mark. No way in whatever year that they build a hotel on the moon is there gonna be a guy called Mark? Because that name is going the way of like Gary and Simon. If you're watching this in the, in the future, when there is a hotel on the moon, and you know a guy called Mark, fair play. Come and find my grave, pull down your trousers, squat over me, take a big, dirty sh 42, that's where you're wrong. I do actually like some songs from Suck It and See, although I would say it's still their worst album. And this one sounds a lot like something that would be played over the end, the end credits of some early 2010s, coming of age film, you know, the, ner the nerdy protagonist has finally impressed the girl that he fancies and they drive off into the sunset with the car that he's stolen from like the big, the sports, the big sporty bully. I don't know what that is. <laughs> he's like beat up the guy with the fishing rod or something. I do wish the whole album was like this. A 41, The Bakery. Bloody love The Bakery. It's basically Cornerstone, but without the happy ending where he shags his ex-girlfriend's sister. And if you ever see me in a bakery, I will be smiling, Alex because I'm a slut for freshly baked bread. <laughs> Slice me up. 40, Love is a Laser Quest. Another one a bit like Despair in the Departure Lounge. It can be hard to listen to just because of how depressing it is. But one of my favorite albums is Carrie and Lowell by Sufi and Stevens. So I do love depressing songs. This song probably would be a little bit lower down the list if it wasn't for the line about Alex describing himself as an old man with his pipe and slippers and rocking chair, singing dreadful songs about summer. Look at the stars. I actually like Yellow by Coldplay, come on. You gotta give them that, their first two albums are good. 39, Pile Driver Waltz. And this one would be higher up the list if it wasn't for the Submarine soundtrack because I, the version on that is a lot better than this one. Not that this version's bad, this is the Prince version of Nothing Compares to You. And the Submarine version is Sinead O'Connor's version. If you disagree, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear your fake tales of San Francisco. This is the only song that I know of that refers to something as being wank, which is not an underused term in the UK, but within music, it definitely is. If anyone's in a band and you're writing some lyrics, slip in a cheeky wank. People will love it. We all love a cheeky wank. 37, still take you home. And this, is so this song's a lot like Fit But You Know It by The Streets. And it's great. It's also basically this this Shrek meme in song form, which does make me wonder which Shrek film is Alex Turner's favourite. We all know Shrek 2 is the best, but Alex Turner would have been about 17 when that came out. So he's probably a little bit too old for it. Maybe like 13 or 14 when Shrek 1 came out. So maybe that's his favourite. If anyone meets him, please can you ask him that? But knowing him, I bet it's something weird like Shrek Forever After. 36, Bigger Boys and Stolen Sweethearts. I don't know why Alex is so surprised that his girlfriend got pinched. Because Sheffield is Steel City, after all. Am I right? 
great early song, pretty simple musically and lyrically. Maybe the guitars weren't distorted enough to fit in to the first album, but the quality is on par. 35, Sculptures of Anything Goes. Another one from the car, and it's another one that feels like a trip to the cinema. Yeah, that rhymes, kind of. It's also kind of a diss track to people who didn't like Tranquility Bass, which is fair enough, because they deserve to be dissed, and worse. I get Humbug vibes off this one, like Humbug, Humbug X, Tranquility Bass. Not just because it's no drums, just vibes. But if this song was a roast chicken, it'd be marinated in Humbug seasoning, but not for a long time. Not like, not overnight, just for a few hours in the morning. Does that make sense? I think it makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Richard of York, the executive branch. Just an amazing way to start a song. Another newer Arctic Monkey song that sounds like Father John Misty. Which is great because I love Father John. A pretty low key way to close the car. But again, it's very cinematic. It sounds like something that would be played at the end of a film where it flash forwards and shows like what all the characters are up to in five years time. 33, Hello You. I'm not going to call this one cinematic. Not because I don't think it is cinematic, because it definitely is. Because I don't want to keep saying the word cinematic. Cinematic, 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 cinematic. It reminds me of something like Dracula Teeth from Last Shadow Puppets. That second Last Shadow Puppets album is so good. Yeah, it's got great lyrics, great melody, those strings as well. Mmm. Mmm. 32, The Jeweler's Hands. I don't know if this is their longest song, but it's up there. Clock's in at 5.43. Every single millisecond is bought and paid for by the dark vibes going on in this song. And it's the final song on Humbug, and it really does feel like an epilogue of Humbug. So, great stuff, well done lads. 31, Dancing Shoes. Get on your dancing shoes. Another simple one from the early days about being scared to break the ice. Classic situation. 30, are you mine? Get some favourite worst nightmare vibes off this one. But it's like a, a sexy favourite worst nightmare song. Like if Teddy Picker was a real sexy guy. I do like this song. But it's not quite an all time classic of theirs. Just because it's basically the same thing the whole way through. And also I wish they wouldn't, I wish they'd stop closing their shows with this. It's not a closer. Are you mine is not a closer. It should be the second song they play. It's a classic second song. You start off with a slow, weird new one, like Mirable or something. Then you go straight into Are You Mine. An upbeat one that everyone knows. There's only one song that they should be closing their shows with. And I've actually got that ranked as number one in this. So, you know, stay tuned for that. 29, Why Do You Only Call Me When You're High? Another sexy song. AM is their sex era. When they were writing this album, you know, they must have all been getting it daily. And this song knows what it's trying to be and it does it brilliantly. Pretty simple and stripped back, but that's what it needs. Not every song needs to be like six minutes long with a load of complex parts. 28, Secret Door. Probably the second least humbug sounding song after Cornerstone. I think this one would probably fit in well on Suck It and See actually. Whole outro section's great. I do wish instead of Fools on Parade, he said Bulls on Parade, and then just busted out into a Rage Against Machine cover. Oh well, maybe they can add that on the 15th anniversary edition of Humbug or something. 27, Body Paint. Starts out like a tranquility based song, then goes into like a little vampire weekend baroque interlude, then bursts into like a classic rock song like David Bowie or something. This is basically their Bohemian Rhapsody, kind of. It's got lyrics about shagging magazine models. Very relatable for me, definitely. I've got with loads of the cover girls from Munters Weekly. I've even made the cover myself a few times great publication. 26, no buses. Maybe the only time that Alex Turner said lady without shouting it. Lady, where's your love gone? It's like a filler version of Riot Van, this song. Also more depressing. Also more like a Smith song. Just a great song. For any newer Arctic Monkeys fans, people who just don't really know much beyond AM. You know, I'm not a gatekeeper. I don't gas like gatekeep or girl boss. More of a manspread, mansplain, manipulate kind of guy. But you should definitely listen to this song because it deserves more love. I want to see this in the top 10 on Spotify before we put a human on Mars. Don't know what year that'd be. You probably got about 50 years, so let's get on it, guys. 25, Pretty Visitors. I'll level with you here. I really dislike the line about the chicken and the dickhead. But everything else about this song is quality. He's almost rapping the verses, which are nice and heavy. And then the chorus has an actual chorus. Well, a four-man chorus. 
quartet, I guess. But I love the solo over the breakdown, and yet again, Helder's the Agile Beast steals the show. What a man. 24, leave before the lights come on. Another one that probably wasn't distorted enough to make the first album, but it's still on par with those songs. Even though this song reached number four in the UK charts, I wasn't aware of it until I properly got deep into Art of Monkeys, you know, circa 2014. But it is a classic, so if you haven't gone super deep on them, but you like their first album, definitely listen to this. Sounds like a lost song from their first album. Plus, Paddy Considine's in the music video. 23, The Ultra Cheese. Look, I'm a massive sucker. I'm also a massive sucker for a big, cheesy piano ballad. And this one sounds like a sci-fi pub drinking song. Like that place in Star Wars, that place in Star Wars where Han Solo was hanging out, whatever it's called, something like Paddy's Pub, I think. At the end of the night, all the aliens are gonna be singing this, I guarantee it. 22, American Sports. I tried to avoid all reviews of Tranquility Base before it came out. The only thing I did see was a headline of a, of a, of a review that said, basically said that there's no drums on the whole album. When I first listened to it, Star Treatment, I was like, okay, not really any drums here. Then straight into American Sports and, and One Point Perspective, and they've got, they've got great drums. So luckily I was lying down because I was shocked. It was a real jump scare. But yeah, only one of the only rocky songs on Tranquility Bass, but also one of the best. Great lyrics. Really like the the line about the money. I've got the money, but I'm still hand, hand but I'm still handcuffed to the briefcase. Oh, briefcase! Twenty one. Crying Lightning. Another humbug one. Not hundred percent sure what he's on about, but I think it's about wanking again. Aggravate the ice cream man on rainy afternoons. You know, ice cream, vanilla ice cream. Cream, aggravate your ice cream man until he erupts and yellowish white cream goes everywhere. Okay, so I guess I do know what this song's about. But I love the way he, his singing gets more intense after every verse. At the start, he's kind of whispering like Sufjan, but by the end, he's yelling like he's System of a Down. That's the name of the System of a Down singer, right? John System 20, Old Yellow Bricks. This song always reminds me of South Park. Whenever I hear Heartless by Kanye West, I think of the Gay Fish song from South Park. Anytime I hear a reference to Wizard of Oz, I think of the, the South Park song about how there's only one road in Canada. Follow the only road. But anyway, the actual song's quite similar to Teddy Picker, my beloved. Theodore Picard. Just another classic favourite Worst Nightmare song. And my ratings of the Arctic Monkeys album's kind of like a reverse bell curve, so... I like the, I really like the old and new stuff, and then the middle stuff is kind of, eh. I see it more as a friend. 19. D is for Dangerous. I'm a big fan of when the lyrics of the song say the title of an album, but the title of the song isn't the title of an album, if that makes sense. So this song has the lyric, Favourite Worst Nightmare, but the song isn't called Favourite Worst Nightmare. Anyway, this song's basically a duet between Alex and Helders. So, you know, what can't the Agile Beast do? He drums, he sings, they're two big things. It's got the beefy, favourite worst nightmare sound, and it's barely two minutes long. So, of course I love it. Plus it mentions a parallel universe, so it's got that tranquility based synergy there. 18, from the Ritz to the Rubble. First verse is almost a rap, and maybe it's a little tr too true to life, because it just reminds me of bouncers acting like dickheads. Why can't they be pleasant? Why can't they have a laugh? It is a great question. And the lyrics really elevate this song. Like musically it's fine, but the lyrics just make this song ascend. Musically, this song is the the last episode of How I Make Your Mother. And the lyrics are that scene where Neil Patrick Harris is talking to the baby, which makes the song average out about the conspiracy theory episode from Community. So, so it's a classic. 17, Brian Storm. I always used to get this song confused with the Pulp Fiction theme song. But unlike Pulp Fiction, this song isn't overrated as fuck. I seriously do not rate Tarantino's films at all. Well, I'll tell you what I do rate. Matt Helders is drumming. And also everything else about this song. Like, it's one of the few songs that they play live that isn't played at half speed. So it does work well in that second song slot of the set list with Are You Mine. 16. When the sun goes down. It's a real shame you don't see Ford Mondeos anymore. And it's also a real shame that they don't play this song live anymore. Because if you put the whole first album into a blender, your drink would taste like this. It's got the soft notes of Marley Bum and Riot Van, the heaviness of View from the Afternoon, they still take you home. So, drink up. 
It's gone very cold. Oh. 15. Too much to ask. If you look at the term hidden German dictionary, you see this song. The Sheffield English Dictionary, page 75 to 85, is just the sheet music of Too Much To Ask. Another depressing breakup song, another banger. There's a formula here. Actually reminds me a bit of Cornerstone, but if Cornerstone was the Barbie of the world, this song is the Oppenheimer. Sounds a lot like a humbug song, quite moody, low key, but still great. If there's one thing to take from this video, it would be listen to Too Much To Ask. 14, 505, overplayed to death. But for it to be so overplayed and still sound so great shows how great the song is. It also shows you only need two chords to create a banger. So for any songwriters out there, don't bother with music theory or anything. Just pick two random chords and you're set. You're good to go. You'll make a banger. It'll go viral on TikTok and anything and everything. I'll give you two right now. Uh, let's see. C sharp six, suspended fourth and G diminished. No idea what that sounds like but good luck. Be sure to credit me as a writer on your song. Thirteen. Suck it and see. Pretty simple upbeat pop song. Nothing too fancy going on here, but this is like the best slice of toast that you've ever had. Like it doesn't need anything fancy for you to enjoy it. It's also got that line formula, she's X, I wish I was Y, with the sawn off shotgun and point it at me. I feel like a line on something like Star Treatment could have been She's Mars and I wish I was the Curiosity Rover. If they ever do a remix they can add that in. I'm just giving a load of song ideas out here for free. Speaking of Star Treatment, Star Treatment. And yes, it does sound like music that's played in a lift, but so what? If it was, I would ride in that lift all day. You just wanted to be one of the strikes, Alex? Well, I think you've had a more successful career than them. Whoa, 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 whoa. I like the strokes too, so chill out. Do I want to know about the strokes? No, I want to know about fluorescent adolescent. You used to get it in your fishnet, so now you only get it in your nightdress. Another great opening line. It's one of those songs that sounds quite upbeat if you're not paying too much attention, but if you are, it's pretty grim and depressing. <laughs> it's a great song, but at the end, when all the backing vocals come in and they sing all the different melodies, that's what takes it from great to classic. All-timer. It's an all-time classic and it's not even in the top 10, so imagine how great those songs are. Well, you're about to find out. In 10, I bet you look good on the dance floor. I was thinking recently about what the song I've heard the most times in my life is, and I think it'd be something that I heard a lot on the radio when I was growing up, and I kept listening to once I started getting into music of my own, and I still listen to now. And this is probably up there as a contender, as a song that I've heard most of my life. Probably up there with something like when You Were Young by The Killers, or Take Me Out by Franz Ferdinand. But anyway, if it is this one, I'm happy to have it there. Nine, four out of five. Four plus five equals nine. Conspiracy. This is when Arctic Monkeys music stopped being used for videos in the, the teen category and started being used for music in the mature category. This song is Prime Milf made by Prime Dilfs. Like a slow jam version of Pretty Visitors with rapping in the verse, kind of. Shows that I don't really know what rapping is if I think this is rapping. And the big arms in the air chorus. Take it easy for a little while. It also shows how great a lyricist Alex is that he can make such compelling lyrics about a Mexican restaurant on the moon, as well as getting kicked out of clubs in Sheffield. It's a long, long song, another long song, but it, but it earns its runtime. Great melodies, funky chords in the bridge. More like five out of five, am I right? Eight, do I wanna know? Another one, a bit like 505. I've heard it so much, and yet every time I hear it, I still think it sounds great. So it truly is a banger. A certified mind blower. If there's this tune I found, it makes me think of you somehow. I play it on repeat until I fall asleep. Just great, great stuff that everyone can relate to. Reminds me a lot of Are You Mine. Almost like it's the song before it on the album, almost. But there's a lot more going on in this song that makes it a classic. Certified, classic, certified mind blower. Seven, Mardi Bum. How can you not love Mardi Bum? It's Mardi Bloody Bum. I'm very glad they started playing it live again, even though it is like at half speed, but that just makes it last longer. Obviously the Glass and Reverb version with the strings is like legendary. And it's another one that's just very relatable. When someone's got the face on, it's just like, you know, there's no point talking to you because you're stuck in your one point perspective. 
If there's a 10 hour loop of this song out there somewhere, someone please send it to me because I love this song so much. And when he says, I've been driving around listening to the score and then those synths come in, it's just like, I can't find the words to do it justice. So I just make some up. It's really like a treb, trenid, trenidacious, trenidation. Tren, it's pure trenidation. Also possibly my favorite Arctic Monkeys guitar solo. No, yeah, it is, definitely is my favorite. The song sounds like the line, driving around listening to the score. Cause it literally sounds like driving around in a car, roof down, by palm trees in the ocean. My one point perspective is that this is one of their best songs. Five, they'd better be a miracle. The name's Bond, Alex Turner. This might be a surprise to have it this high in the list, but if you're surprised, that just shows to me that you haven't listened to this song. It's so, 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 so good. This song is like an expensive wine. You have to like sniff it, hold it up to the light, swirl it round your mouth, all that rubbish. But you do that and it's like, mmm. I get notes of Pyramid Song by Radiohead. I get notes of Futile Devices by Sufjan Stevens. Ooh, a bit of Buddy's Rendezvous by Father John Misty. Get it? Notes. Notes like music, notes like wine tasting. Ah, it's a great blend. <sighs> Speaking of wine, I'm not so much wine as Teddy Picker, but this song is like wine in the sense that I have to consume both daily. I've talked a lot about my love of Teddy Picker in this video, and for good reason. It's a banger, it's a bloody banger. 100% banger. Notes of banger. The riff, banger. The lyrics, Banger. The drums, banger. Everything, banger. The bass, not a banger. No, it is a banger. Of course it is. Of course it bloody is. Plus, it's under three minutes long. Plus, the line, not quick enough, can I have it quicker, is what I say anytime I watch them play any of their old songs in concert. Wee. Cheers. Speaking of old songs, number three, The View from the Afternoon. Track one, album one. And what a way to start your career. The drums at the start sound like a car crash, but in a good way. And it's quite heavy overall, actually. It honestly reminds me of Chop Suey, in a good way. Wake up! Plus you got that bit where the two guitars are kind of like playing back and forth in the left and right channel. And it's just like, ah, oh, mmm. Very good. But luckily for us, they didn't peak with their first song. Because in number two, we have Cornerstone. If this song was just the line, I smelt your scent on the seatbelt and I kept my shortcuts to myself, it would still be in the top five. That's how good that line is. It's a good bridge between their early and later careers. It's got the down to earth lyrics, but it's quite soft. It's quite a soft sounding song. And the storytelling is unmatched for most of, most of like modern indie. And it's the final verse where he gets with his ex's sister that takes this song from a pleasant deep cut to a to an all-time banger, to an all-time great. I am so glad that they still play this song live because it sounds like the exact type of song that they'd cut to play another AM song. Not that there's anything wrong with AM. It has a certain romance about it. The number one, a certain romance. Of course it is. If you're from the UK, this has to be your favorite song. If you're from a smaller, smaller city or a town, and then you spend an extended period of time in a bigger city, then you come home, it's kind of like, yeah, damn. There ain't no romance around here. When your old mates do overstep the line, it is, it is like, damn, I just cannot get angry in the same way. It's just everything that's great about Arctic Monkeys. It's their best song. If you disagree, you are wrong. It's a bit like if There Is A Light That Never Goes Out was about a town rather than dying in a car crash and also had George of the Jungle drums at the start. Watch out for that tree. <sighs> wow. There you go. Every Arctic Monkey song ranked worst to best. We made it. Between Humbug, Suck It and See and AM, they have a lot of songs that are built around very similar formulas and structures. They do kind of all blend into one a bit. So I think the reason that I'm such a big fan of Tranquility Bass and The Car is just how much the songs deviate from that formula. But if you take anything away from this video, it should be listen to Too Much To Ask, Leave Before The Lights Come On, and No Buses. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Goodbye.